now appearing in the building up in every ear hole from 80 year olds to the children you're here to hear about the heroes and the villains and save yourself some dollars yen and euros from the zeros to the millions this is a lot of class packed into one podcast they probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five-alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists, giant-sized goliaths, and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I... I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT, Young, New, Mighty, and Secretly. Try and I in it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT, Young, New, Mighty, and Secretly. Try and I in it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. Welcome to EMBS episode 52.2, point <laughs> <laughs> <Or> one, <laughs> where we shoot the breeze for about an hour, uh, since Viet is out making money on the road and Bobby's cross country with family, I had a friend step in, uh, introducing Mark Marble from the Lantern Cast, who is no stranger to listeners. Hello, Corwin, long time no talk. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. There is a reason why it's fifty two point two because I, uh, I I accidentally messed up the first recording. So we're we're redoing, we're redoing secretly. But um, we are recording this now as of July 9th, twenty twenty four. Uh, you can usually get these EMBS episodes um a month early by supporting us on Patreon at patreon dot com slash empcast, and then usually a month later, episode drops for everybody else, but uh, we're behind, so I might do this one a little bit differently. I'm sure you guys will understand. But um, definitely thanks for donating on Patreon. If you are signed up, you can, little as dollars a month, you can help the show out, keep the lights on, get goodies from the show, comics, um, artwork from friends of the show, and eventually even some custom toy stuff from Viet. Uh, Mark, how goes it? It's going okay. Today is certainly... Cer- Today is certainly better than if we had recorded yesterday. Yesterday was a lousy day, so I'm glad I'm glad we had targeted this day instead for round two. Yep, you getting rained on? No, but I'm, I'm getting I'm getting warmed on because God, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this ridiculous. <laughs> for you, it would be nothing, <laughs> but for us, this weather is. It's not. It's not. It's not even that I. The, the daytime temperatures, which are horrible, being in the mid 90s, is the fact when the low temperatures are like 76, and that's kind of the pattern we're in. But like this. As this, I think we're getting a slight reprieve this weekend, but right now this is like the worst of it because like the next three, the next three nights starting tonight. Actually, I think it's yeah, I think starting tonight, the next three nights, the low temperatures, if you can call them low, are in the mid 70s. So like you get no relief even at night. It's like yeah, this sucks. Um, yeah, that's why I would never want to live in Florida. <laughs> I'm bitching from the 104 degree during the day. It's like ugh, it's ridiculous. At least central air is so common down there. That does make it a tad easier. But, yes, that's, but when you're indoors, it's great. And as long as you have power, it's great. But when you true. have to go outside, not so much. True, so, true, true. True, true, true. But so, otherwise, I'm okay. All right. So no for, list, for listeners who don't know, Mark is from the Lantern Cast, www.lanterncast.com. And uh, what do you guys talk about on your show over there? Shockingly, we talk mostly about Green Lantern. That's That's our focus. We talk about D- Green Lantern number one stuff related to DC. Probably still in con- in context of Green Lantern, most, but not exclusively. We sometimes we do things that are not related to Green Lantern at all. Obviously, comic book wise, we cover some important issues. Our famous firsts were, which were intros to us to either characters or storylines that may have nothing to do with Green Lantern. We obviously, for Corwin knows that we do a lot of uh, pop culture episodes we do we well we haven't done house of the dragon which we will talk about but we haven't mm-hmm. done any shows because i don't i don't know if chad has max at the moment but we did obviously did we did game of thrones back in the day we do a lot of movie reviews things like that so we we cover we run the gamut we have we have different uh spinoffs too related to personal interests 
of Chad and I, and also related to some specific things related to Green Lantern lore too. So we try to we try to be all encompassing as much, but we we can't forget what, what what we're really there to cover first and foremost. Yeah, I miss the Ringpedia episodes. Yeah, I actually I have I have another ring that I should do. I was I thought I was going to have a second ring to do you know so it'd be like a double feature the same mate the same maker having two they actually they would have been they would be two sinestro rings Ooh. if i ever get the second one um i'm, I'm only saying that with tongue in cheek i know i will get it it's just that we're, it <laughs> there, there tends to be a lot of delays these days and that and it kind of so it makes it difficult to try to plan an episode on a timely fashion but i'll show you i'll show you the i'll try to show you the ring that it's it's a sinestro core ring from uh oh god what was that horrible animated movie they released last year? Brightest was it in Brightest Day? No, was it? Uh, geez, the, the John Stewart one. Yeah, the Parallax one. Um, was that in Brightest Day? I don't remember. It's all right. It doesn't. It. I. I think it might be. If if not, but yes, it's it's the it's the Sinestro ring from design from that from that movie because because I, he did a Green Lantern ring like uh, in that design too. Yeah, so that will probably be that will probably be the next ring ring encyclopedia. Beware episode. my power. Yep. Beware my power. I knew it was something close. It's something related to the oath. Uh, yes, beware my power. That makes more sense. Yeah. So beware my power is the so that's the that's the uh, resin ring that I have, and there'll be another ring that I will be fo- that I will hopefully be able to do an episode on. So depending on how it goes, it might just be my like I plan the combo. The combo episode covering two rings at once. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Well, much like you guys, the movie talk and TV talk, EMBS is where we just literally talk about almost anything pop culture, except for the X-Men and Avengers books, comics books, which we usually cover on our other podcasts. So this is more free form and just flowing and fun. Um, and I will start it off with this movie called Civil War, um, directed by Alex Garland, starring Kirsten Dunst. Uh, no clues to other people. Wagner Mora, Kaylee Spaney. But um, it takes place in the dystopian future where the United States has plummeted into civil war. Um, we learned that the uh, president did some crazy stuff like disband the FBI and um, just all kind of craziness and the story is about some reporters who are traveling cross cross country to interview the president before the war is over and some other craziness um i didn't know what to expect going in because you know i like to avoid trailers for the most part and i went in blind and i expected this to be more of a kind of a war story and the reason why everything happens but I was surprised to find it was just literally about uh, journalists, the photographer, and some other journalists just literally traveling cross country and running into crazy situations and getting a little bit of background of what actually happened to, you know, send the United States into civil war. But they don't really focus on what happened or how it happened. It's just kind of the state of things. Yeah, focusing on journalists, America's favorite people. <laughs> it's like, how could that turn out poorly? Uh, yes, I I have not seen Civil War. It's one of those things where I'm sure I actually it's an A24 movie, so I'm mm-hmm. sure it's going to be on Ma- on Max at some point because I think they have a pretty they have a pretty decent streaming deal with with WB. So I'm not sure if every single A24 movie currently is on Max, but the overwhelming majority of them. Are on it, and I and I and I do like most of Alex Garland, most of his movies. Like I, like, I do like Ex Machina a lot. I do watch that one a lot, and Annihilation was kind of odd, but that's not original. That's was based on a book, so it's not like it's original, right? Original material. The, I had heard pretty much everything you said. I I had heard about this movie that you you would think this movie was going to be more about the politics of how you got there, which again, it's still odd that it's not more considering if they're journalists and even if your goal is to get to the white house to like interview the president before basically the government falls, the reality is you would think that somewhere just amongst yourselves, there would be conversations about basically 
what led us to this? <laughs> so, but that's not, but that, but Garland has made it clear that wasn't anything that he was really interested in talking about, which is part of the reason why the alliances in this movie between states and different regions that currently in our, in real world America absolutely would make no sense whatsoever. But that's part of the reason why, because in a way it's like, it doesn't really matter who's who and, and why they're together. It just matters that basically this, this scenario has happened. It's yeah. I, I guess I think part of the reason why it didn't have as much appeal to a lot of people is probably because it's like, we're like only one, one potentially bad election away from that really happening at this <laughs> at this stage of the day. So I, I, I don't, you, you tend to go to movies because you're look you're, you're looking you're looking for relief and release. So so, I don't know. I, I do think I do think that was part of it. Plus, again, like you said, some people probably maybe were interested in the politics of it. And, th- and and seeing how that you know, hey, is this movie going to be so you know really pro pro left or is it going to be really pro right? Well, you probably would just always assume it wouldn't be that, but but whether it was going to be like middle of the road and try to do the best you could to present an, an an even representation of oh how basically how democracy falls, but the reality is I so I think those people probably were disappointed too when they found out, especially if they had heard ahead of time. It's like no, that's not really what the movie's about, so. It's. I will, like I said, I'll probably watch it, but it was something that, from for multiple reasons, you, the build up, and then once I heard how what the movie was really like, it kind of lessened my enthusiasm for it. Yeah. Solid stuff, though. It's on video on demand, so you can rent it just about on all the platforms right now. Yeah, probably that's probably the last stand before it ends up streaming somewhere, which will probably be. Oh, yeah. I would I would assume Max will be the next death, the next stop for that after they get all the blood from the stone they can get out of it for video on demand. <laughs> Which I, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Speaking what do you of got? speaking of Max, <laughs> cha-ching. Uh, all right, so let's talk House of the Dragon. Which the one benefit of what happened on uh, I suppose it's Saturday is the fact that then we have another. We have another episode we can talk about. Wow. If need be. <laughs> <laughs> so House of, House of the Dragon is such an it is such an interesting show because it's like for ninety percent of every episode so far it's pretty boring. <laughs> you, you just kind of get like the last ten or fifteen minutes that you that kind of like try to carry it over the, the finish line. And I would say the last episode, episode four, did succeed in carrying it over the finish line, but the majority of the episode was still slow. But the slowness is only one aspect of the pro. I mean, I do like the show, but it's no Game of Thrones. <laughs> and the characters are just not very likable. None. Well, that's, most that's, of them. Yeah. Yeah, most of them. And, 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 and right on cue, the, the one we talked about being one of the most, if not the most likable character, is now dead. <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Queen that never was. <laughs> that, uh,. Yeah, that's a big difference between this and Game of Thrones. As Game of Thrones, you always had people that you actually were rooting for and you liked. Yes, they mostly faced really horrible deaths at the end of the day when you least expected it. But you had rooting interest, and even and you and you did have some major characters like Daenerys you were rooting for till the very end, till they gave her the ultimate ridiculous heel turn, and then point, and then had the nerve to wag their finger at us in the final episode. That yeah, you were rooting for her the whole time. What does that say about you? It's that's because that's how you wrote it, Jack Hole. That's yep. the reason why. <laughs> it's like she was always the lesser of the evils until you decided to make her evil just because, because. <laughs> just beca- exactly, just because. Exactly, just because. Oh, and don't get me wrong. I'm sure I, not that we'll probably ever live to see Martin finish those books. <laughs> but but if we did, if I, I, I didn't read the article, but there was some rumor that might be maybe Winds of War might actually be getting close to being finished. But he still has a, what, at least one more book to do after that. But the point is, I'm sure that his plan was, you know, because Benioff and Weiss did pick his brain to basically know where the story essentially, how, how it was basically going to end, I guess, in case he dropped, he dropped dead before he got to finish the story. So they, so it doesn't mean they didn't tweak some stuff because they, 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 everybody tweaked stuff. They tweaked stuff in House of the, the Dragon, too. But I'm sure the Daenerys heel turn is actually, was absolutely what he was going to do. But in the book, I'm sh- in the books, I'm sure it would be much better. <laughs> yeah, it would take some years, maybe. Get, definitely have more of a buildup. 
plus you get would get plus it's writing, so you're going to get inside her head. Right. You'll get to understand more what she's thinking, what she's feeling. I mean, I've always been able to just you can justify her having a break because of all the shit that she went through. Pardon my language. No, no, you final, could. And the final, like season and a half, all the stuff she went through, how everybody she was close to got killed, how how Tyrion, the smartest man in Westeros, all of a sudden crosses the sea and becomes a moron, <laughs> and every advice he ever, every piece of advice he ever gave her was horrible and blew up in her face. It's like it's like oh yeah, listen to everybody but myself, and that's why I. I ended up taking attacking King's Landing like a season and a half later than I would have normally. Except now I have half my army dead and, and two and down two dragons when I could have taken it in two minutes if we had t- <laughs> if we did it in season seven. Uh, it's but but the characters were likable and this it's like seeing you know seeing inter inter house squabbling itself is not nearly as interesting. There's not many. Rhaenyra is probably I mean Rhaenyra now that she's she's the only one up to two left. Rhaenyra is so likable, but she's still not charismatic. So it's it's really it's an interesting show. It keeps me coming back to watch it, just like the last thing we'll talk about tonight. But it doesn't mean that I have any pa- have much passion for it, and it does certainly does not seem to be anywhere close to what Game of Thrones was, as far as from my perspective. Yeah, and you know, there's a. There's a uh, video out, I think it was on season five, it's the Dance of the Dragons, where they actually tell this whole story. So if listeners want to just Google it or YouTube it, um, I know it's on YouTube, House of the Dragon, Dance of Dragons. It actually goes over the historical account of all these events. So the major beats are there, but of course, reality differs somewhat from what they write in the book. So, you know, there are a few little surprises here or there, but the biggest beats are definitely going to be the same as we've already seen so far with blood and cheese as well as the uh i don't even know what this battle was called the last battle where uh oh some, something oh god is it something like rook's nest or something like something yeah. like that so all that stuff is in there but man the characters i agree are just most of them are not likable um damon how do you feel about him do you think he is behind Rhaenyra he's mostly behind himself but on the sliding scale I think so and I think more especially if you if you look at the episode we just saw you could make a case that he's really you know that these are his these are his inner demons kind of eating at him things that he's done that he may not necessarily be ashamed may be proud of and that all these things that he's basically these problems that he's created that he kind of has created you know, the Renera situation since he kind of was the, because of his jealousy over her when she was little and then even arguably grooming her to be in this position where maybe he could be with her because this would suit his needs to from a power perspective. And the fact that, you know, he kind of has made Aemon the way Aemon is and obviously killing uh, killing Aegon's son is, you know, it's something that that's going to be a, that's going to be a hard one to uh, to live down. So I think he's being haunted by these demons. So depending, it could push him more to want to, you know, kind of like prove other people wrong about what they think of him or what his what his shortcomings are. But it, rem- it remains to be seen because he is essentially a wild card. Oh, yeah. And last time we did talk about his the daughters he had with the, uh, I can't even remember the other. The, uh, Valer- the Valerian. Valerian, yeah. Yeah. His two daughters. So uh, one of them we've seen take off. You know, Rhaenyra sent her away with her youngest as well as the dragon's eggs. And the other one is still around. So I'm... I'm, I'm oh, well, we know they're not going to survive. But uh, I hope we see some good things for them at least. And at least, you know, some decent action or, you know, going out in a blaze of honor or something with them. Because I like that they're just still around even though we don't know much about them. Bela, Bela's the whole, the oldest one, right? She's the hot one. The one that's left, or was that the or was that his dead wife? One of them was Bela. I know one of them was Bela. I'm terrible with names, so yeah. Oh, I th- I back. think I think this one. I think the da- the daughter. I think the daughter might be Bela. I can I can look it up when you're talking. Um, but yeah, it's it is it is an interesting role that they have to play, being you know being Damon's being Damon's blood and 
but yet being you know being sworn you know lo- loyalty wise to Rhaenyra, and of course like the people the people who observe this and it's been, and, it, and it was confirmed that the you know when they're when they're taking those four they're taking those four eggs away to protect them that th- the th- that the three the three eggs that nothing <laughs> that they don't do anything with in this show yes they are Daener- they are Daenerys's eggs so Drogon and uh, but Viserion and what the hell is what the hell was the other one? That's the one that was named after Rhaegar. I already told you I'm horrible. Right, maybe, names. yeah, but uh, those those are Daenerys's eventual dragons, and those three of the four eggs are going to be hers. So that's 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 kind of that's kind of a nice tie-in. I mean, I some people, I mean, some people, some people have been complained about when they do some of the tie-ins, like which I can understand really heavily playing off the whole prophecy, the whole ice and fire prophecy, and tying mm-hmm. it directly to. Aegon the Conqueror that he had this vision and things like that, which again I don't think is really straight up from. I don't believe that's straight up from the book. So, uh, but I understand why they did it, and they're trying. You know, they're, they're, they're world building, so it so it kind of makes it kind of makes sense that they that they do that. So, and uh, you know, you mentioned world building. I do love the fact that we get to see the other houses. Um, we go to the Wall up north. You know, we get to see some of the ancestors of some of the families. So, I like them. You know, like you said, world building. I like them giving us little extras here or there. And, you know, I really do hope that they maybe take a good episode out just to give us a side story of just other characters and other things that are going on in the world that may not be, you know, deep into the into the main story, even though we usually get what? Is it usually 10 episodes even with Game of Thrones? Yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be 10. It'll be 10. As far as I know, it's it's still 10 this year. But previously, with the other se- with the other series, was it usually ten episodes a season? Yeah, ex- yeah, I believe it was ten up until I think the final season, which was because shorter. those episodes were lo- yeah the up the seasons were shorter, but the episodes were longer. But I think ten, 10 was absolutely the standard Game of Thrones um, standard ten the standard Game of Thrones season length was ten. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they'll have some time to play around a little bit. Like, <laughs> did you ever watch Breaking Bad? No. There's one episode where the main character is literally just trying to kill a fly in 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 the lab. It's just like <laughs> just out of nowhere, just a silly side story. So, yeah, there's so many characters in this that they can give play and give extra time to um, even develop. So, hopefully, they'll do something like that because, yeah, as you said, nobody here is really fully likable completely as well. No, I mean, and you have you have a lot of characters. Well, you have several characters that are in the middle. I can't even say it's a lot. I mean, maybe maybe Otto's someone who's kind of in the middle. You know, he's not horrible. He's self-serving, but he's not horrible. And he and he does have and he does have vision. I mean, he is a good from an advice perspective. He does kind of understand the way things work. Yeah. So that so that's, but obviously, a you know. Aegon there is a is a moron and <laughs> complete and utter he's moron. a complete complete utter moron and and Aemon is a sociopath. Uh, so that's that whole that whole side is screwed up. I mean that whole side is really and and Allison's just kind of like she's just gone off the deep end it seems too on to a certain extent. So there's no doubt from a storytelling perspective we're supposed to be rooting for the the black the house you know the the house of the black not the house of the green mm-hmm. here. With the green being uh, Aegon's supporters and the and the black being Rhaenyra's yes. supporters, so it's probably it's pretty clear and and it, and it makes sense. We know she's the one who got shafted and you know, she should have been queen. So mm-hmm. we under so it, it, the story is just with you know tailor made for us to root for her anyway. But yeah, and Rhaegal Rhaegal was the other dragon. That's okay. the one. Viserion, Rhaegal, and Drogon. So yeah. But I'm I'm still interested, so I'm gonna I, I I'm really curious how how many seasons they could get out of this, because I didn't I haven't read the book, but I but it's obviously the actual source material is not nearly as lengthy. No, as it. no, I'd be surprised so, if we get more than four. I mean, hey, I'd be surprised if we get more than four. Yeah, I would agree with that. We know that they've already greenlit season three, which is which makes sense because it takes that's part of part of the problem with the HBO shows is the fact that there takes. And it isn't just exclusive now to HBO, but it, but it, when it, when HBO was back in the day, this was always the issue with HBO because they were always the creme de la creme of the first. You know, when you moved beyond regular broadcast TV and onto pay 
pay TV, pay cable, mm -hmm. that they always had once they once they figured it out. Because you know, like everything else, you have these bad, a lot of the cheesy, you know, TNA shows, and which are still worth watching. But you had like first and ten and other <laughs> things like that on that. On, for, I have I have a weakness for first and ten, but but the reality is that once they kind of became what they are now, when they actually kind of unlocked the formula for some like really high watch, high watchable TV shows, uh, that's that's the price you pay. Whether it's The Sopranos or Game of Thrones, it's like you you're waiting like year and a half. Year and a half for the next season, season, two years for the next season. Then, then it's like six episodes here, and you split the season into two, and things like that. It's like that's the price you pay. So the fact that they green, it, it probably is a plus that they greenlit this as quickly, as quickly as they did. Plus, I, I don't think the strike had much of an effect on this show since they were filming over in England. Yeah. True. 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 But yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it. Looking forward to it. Um, looking forward to some of the big upcoming stuff that Damon and Eamon fight is the one I'm probably most excited for and uh, I don't know if there's going to be any fight bigger than that but we will see yes yes we will alright my next pick is The Bear which is on Hulu uh, it is an FX show starring Jeremy Allen White um, most of the characters most of the actors on this show I have never seen before but um it's basically uh, starring, or basically about Carmi, who is a, um, he's a chef. He goes overseas to study to be a chef. However, back home, his brother dies, and he has to come back and take over the family restaurant. And he, or sa not even restaurant, it's just sandwich shop, to be honest with you. But he tries to turn it around and make it into a full-blown restaurant. But, you know, with these kind of stories, the world is against him. Um, but... It mainly revolves around the restaurant and all the characters in it. So you get, you know, a little bit of, you learn a little bit of everybody who works there and how they all interact and how they fit in with the world. And, you know, he comes in there and he's already just places falling apart. The health inspector's on his case and nobody wants him there as well. So, because it was his brother's shop, so everybody kind of wants to keep things the same and he's trying to grow it and trying to do things different. Um... But the characters are just fantastic. The <laughs> the relationships that they have, especially um, the conflict that they have and how certain characters grow and change over the last three seasons is just great. And I mean, I binged it all in like one weekend. I literally didn't leave the house for the whole weekend while I binged it. And they're mostly short um, half hour episodes, which makes it a little bit easier. But... As the seasons go on, they kind of sprinkle in little famous actors here and there, which I thought was really, really cool because you just weren't expecting it. Um, we eventually see his older brothers, Joel, um, what's his name, Berth Berthnall? Uh, did the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then his mother is Jamie Lee Curtis, of all people, and she plays a alcoholic, probably schizophrenic mother and just the stress and the craziness of their household during like Christmas was just it was just some excellent excellent acting um, even that episode I think was like an hour long but um, the characters are awesome the story is really good and it, it's just funny there's a lot of humor in it and some of these characters are just over the top and odd especially when you start getting to the cousin which I'm going to leave that one for you um, to discover what all that is about, as well as um, a little saying that you actually said earlier, but I I'm going to let you discover that as well because I thought it was funny. So, The Bear, Hulu, check it out. It, it is a show that I am interested in to a certain extent. I don't have Hulu, so at the moment I can't I can't watch it, but it's something that when the opportunity does arise, I will probably, I will definitely, I'm definitely going to try it out it as i mentioned to you the other day it's like sometimes it's like it, it's if something becomes too trendy so it almost it kind of makes me almost not want to watch, watch something so i it, i'm not quite there with, there with that show but because they would push it so heavily like in in the movies like in the pregame in the pregame you know before you even get to the trailers the the 20 or whatever they call it now which is they keep they keep shrinking it so it's <laughs> So it's not really a twenty-minute, you know, a pre pre-show anymore. But certainly for Regal, they they would push they would push the bear a lot. So it's it's 
I am I am curious, but I do hear I do hear good things. So it's definitely something that I would I'm hoping to check out in, in the near future. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention: they get into some of the characters' heads with how they create their dishes. So it is cool seeing them jot things down in notebooks, going back to things, trial and error, literally trying things and spitting it out because it's terrible and the learning process with how they make their dishes and come up with things. So um, if you like food as well, you will dig this. That's cool. That is cool. Lift, lifting the veil a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. So I guess here's one that stays by popular <laughs> demand of Corwin. <laughs> Something I'm not proud that I watched, but I didn't feel like I need to go take a shower after I... <laughs> Under the right circumstances, maybe. Uh, on, on Tubi, on Tubi of all places, since Tubi is expanding out in their uh, on-demand... Usually it's a lot of movies, which, of course, you don't. the majority of which you probably can take to the bank. No, Tubi didn't pay to have made. They probably just bought the rights to, them, to have them be exclusives because they're almost, they're almost all horror movies, which is up my alley anyway. Yep. But one of the... Sh- one of their TV shows that's a Tubi only exclusive is House of Heat, which essentially, if you if you if you imagine the the real world like cir- cir- circle of nineteen nineties when that show was really <laughs> at its peak, and you imagine it for like uh, only fans and and, uh, and barely dressed influencers, that's the show for you. <laughs> it's it's something I got to tell you. It's not it's it's not as w- I'm trying. I'm trying to phrase it the best way. On some levels, it's not completely as irredeemable as you would think. But yet, on some levels, it, <laughs> it's uh, just it, as bad as you think. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's still slightly different because you don't have the, you don't have everybody working together either at a job, which was always a, a cornerstone in the real world, or you don't have people splitting into teams and competing against each other, or have trying to do trying to do goals so it's kind of so it's not like they don't have that survivor element too where you you know where you're but i mean essentially all they're really doing is they're trying to grow their quote-unquote brand and get and get more in get more followers and get more exposure more likes more clicks so as usual there were there, there are some people that you there are some people that just like stirring the pot you always have to have at least one or two of those that always just like causing problems and you have people who t- tend to they tend to pair off, which isn't to be fair. When you watch the show, it's not. There's some criticism about some of the two people in particular who, who end up pairing up, and, pair, and but it's not really their fault because they basically, I think, every, I think almost everybody gets put in rooms of two because I think there's, I think there's eight. Two of them are couples, mm-hmm. two, two, two groups of two are couples. So that that's right there. So I think, I believe. That almost everybody, if not everybody, were in in rooms of two anyway. So you had no these two people in particular were. So they were roommates to begin with, essentially. So I don't know. I I enjoy it. I mean, it's it isn't over yet. So we don't. I don't know how I'm going to feel at the end. But it's it's certainly a it's certainly a fast moving a fast moving show. And it's still sad that those show, those episodes are much longer than. The last thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm serious. I think almost every episode is like at least is at least forty is at least forty something minutes. Uh, so, it's it's your ultimate definition of a, probably a guilty pleasure. But there, are, but there are some very attractive people. Some of will obviously appeal to others more. But it's like I said, you you could do worse than at least watching the, the first episode and seeing and seeing how it seeing how it works. And then these, all these people have real like accounts to follow and stuff for their social media stuff and businesses and stuff. Yep, that's why I'm following Jade Ramey on uh, <laughs> on Instagram now. <laughs> <laughs> Team Jade, baby. <laughs> but I never heard. Of, yeah, I never heard of any of these people before I watched that show, and it it's an inter- it is an interesting exploration for, even from a morals perspective about what uh, what people are what people are doing because you have some people some people that are doing more more modeling and more other stuff and then there's other people that are just out and out like doing porn pretty much so mm-hmm. but they're of course in control of it because that you know because they're making it and distributing it themselves so okay yep. good yeah. times 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's a great job if you can get it. <laughs> All right. Speaking of money and cash grabs, um, I saw actually saw this one in theaters. Furiosa Mad Max Saga, which is now on video on demand. I did end up seeing it in theaters because the kids wanted to see it. Um, did you ever see Fury Road? Yes, I saw Fury Road. Okay. So it's very much in the same vein as that. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything new. Um, majority of it is just the stunts and the crazy rides and uh, car battles. Um, it does build on some story because you get the whole origin of Furiosa, where she comes from, what happened to her, how she lost her arm and everything else. Um, she really doesn't say much throughout the movie as well. There's not much character development with her. Um... You get to see Immortal Joe's cabal, his little syndicate of characters and how the, their society works and how he kind of, it builds and changes. Um, I think the biggest plus out of this was Chris Hemsworth because he's just nuts and funny. Um, his character is kind of the main villain of, of the movie. And he just steals the show. He really does steal the show. Um, this is the kind of thing you can just catch on TV and kind of put it on its background noise and just maybe enjoy. I don't think it's anything where, actually, I know it's not nothing that I would actually want to buy the Blu-ray or watch the director's cut, you know, director's commentary or any extras. It, it, it just didn't, it wasn't that good. It was okay. Definitely not better than Fury Road. Now, as someone who was not a big fan of Fury Road, that it doesn't... So this 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 movie from the get go from the from the advertising and marketing perspective did not appeal to me whatsoever. It seemed like it kind of was a it seemed like it was a one trick pony because it, everything just seemed to be a hey more car chases and more in the desert and more things blowing up and more things dressed like you know like not necessarily like uh like not not steampunk but more like cyberpunk stuff and it's like okay. Uh, it didn't. It didn't surprise me that this movie didn't do well. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Like I didn't think, I didn't think that uh, Oppenheimer was going to do well, and I still will stick to my guns that if not for the fake Barbie Barbenheimer movement, <laughs> which absolutely was not natural, that was an industry created, an industry created movement because Barbie didn't need it. Barbie was already tracking for 150 million dollar opening like a month and a half before it before it opened is Oppenheimer that needed the help and those movies have nothing in common that, that that's like when people joked when uh, Saw X and Paw Patrol opened up together Saw Patrol <laughs> that they have about as much as common as those, these two movies right <laughs> so that was a manufactured but still regardless of why the fact is that move that Oppenheimer did did do well but I, this is one of those movies where I was absolutely right about I had I had no doubt this movie wasn't going to do well <laughs> And geez, I can't. I, you know, you can't imagine why. I mean, Ma Mad Max is a kind of a cult franchise anyway. Always been, never been a big money maker. Even at the height of Mel Gibson's popularity with like Thunderdome, that movie didn't de didn't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You waited like thirty years to do Fury Road, and you know you, you threw Mel Gibson away, which of course that's really easy to do in Hollywood these days. Well, so I mean, of course, it was, it's kind of old for the role now. No, I know, but still, that would have been. We we know how that. We know how that nostalgia thing has worked over the last, ten, ten years or so. You, you can't necessarily say that there wouldn't have been an interest in a Mad Max movie if Mel, from just from a. Uh, universe perspective, that, that there wouldn't have been an interest to see a Mad Max movie with Mel Gibson's back. But it doesn't matter. The point is, they waited thirty years, so they decided to recast. Then they gave you a Mad Max movie, which wasn't really about Mad Max. Nope. It was at least half, if not more, about Furiosa. Yep. Then you wait nine years. You don't even do a sequel. You do a prequel, which almost all prequels people don't care about Holy nearly crap. as has much. It, has it really been almost nine years? It's been nine. It was nine years. I think that was a 2015 movie. Oh, shit. So you waited nine years, and then a movie that only did like between like 350, 360-ish million dollars worldwide the last time. Let's give this the prequel. When you, the prequel, which now forces you to recast the best thing you had going for it, if you liked Fury Road, it's probably Charlize Theron. So now you got to recast, 
And then let's give that movie a hundred and sixty eight million dollar budget, which pretty much is guaranteeing you have to make a well, well over five hundred million dollars in all likelihood just to turn a profit. But what could possibly go wrong with all that? <laughs> and you saw what went wrong. Nobody saw it. But it's it Anna Taylor well. Joy. Everybody loves her. Yeah. I like <laughs> I like Anna Taylor Joy to a certain extent, though I, I must admit, I do think she looks quite anorexic these days. I think she looked a lot better when she had a little more weight yeah. on her, like sort like circa split. I think she looked a lot better when she, you know, when she looked a little healthier, I think, when they did split than compared to either Fury Road or The Menu, which I love. The Menu, oh, I really yeah. like that movie. That but she was, movie. and she's great in it, but, but she looks really thin in that movie too. But the reality is, yeah, I mean, it's nothing against Anna Taylor Joy. It's like this project, it's, it's, it was almost, it was pretty much destined to fail. So it's one of those things where once again, you look at, the, the false concept of hey if you just give the if you just let the creator do what they want to do and have everybody step aside it's going to turn out great or, or it'll turn out better no Mm-mm. some people like people you know directors directors writers everybody they're people and some people work better with supervision and deadlines and some people don't if you're a procrastinator you work better with deadlines sometimes you work better under pressure so it's like <laughs> It's like when I every paper I ever wrote in college. Do you think I wrote that thing ahead of time? No, I wrote it the <laughs> night before I had to turn it in. Now I did research ahead of time. I knew exactly how I was going to write it. But if I had a if I had a paper due at eight at nine o'clock in the morning at, on on a on a Wednesday, I'd be right. I I'd start writing it like literally sitting in front of the computer like eleven p.m. on Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be up all free, and I nice. and I probably still wouldn't finish the damn thing until like six in the morning, and then I'd sleep for a couple <laughs> hours and get up. That's that's because that's that's also because you know you can do it. Mm-hmm. So that's an element of that. But it's the same thing. Some people work better with deadlines. Some people don't. Some people naturally just do things quickly and, and on their. And it's like this: you leave people to their own devices. Sometimes they go off the they go off the rails. It's like in. Somebody could have very. This was a van. This was a vanity project. This was a George Miller vanity project that nobody wanted to say. Well, you know, probably a sequel would do better than a prequel, and probably we don't. We probably should keep the budget down a little bit, just because it's not like the last movie made all that much money. It was a media darling, and certain percentage of the people who went to see it loved it, but not everybody loved it. And no matter what, it didn't make a lot of money. And and then like. Like we like we t- we talked about too is the fact that even if this movie had worked, his great idea for a follow up was another friggin' prequel. <laughs> it was going to be a it was going to be a heaven forbid a Mad Max universe movie focused on Mad, Mad Max. Max. There's a shocker, but it was going to be take it was going to take place a year before Fury Road. Really, that doesn't seem none of this seems like really the the way to go. I mean, I understand they probably couldn't even if you wanted to have put those put Furiosa and Mad Max together again since Tom Hardy apparently did not get along well with Charlize Charlize. Theron at all making that movie. But still, I mean, I don't know. It just seems very, very odd choices across the board. And so so I will watch it because I'm sure that movie will absolutely be on Max because that's another WB movie. But I will watch it. But to me, that was always a movie that I could just wait and watch on, on, on TV, not to go see it in the theater. Yeah. <clears throat> all right all right i'm up all right so i'm gonna do the i'm gonna do this one quick so this is this is this is my curveball and i'm and i'm and i'm doing it well i'm not doing it just for you i'm doing it because, be, but it you'll appreciate that i'm doing this i think <laughs> this and this is there's a b on this which has nothing to do with what i'm saying but the majority of what i'm gonna say is <laughs> you'll understand why okay so this this is nothing this is nothing new at all other than the fact that i happen and i happen to notice the other night just by it can't it popped up in the recommendation and then it was like okay let me just do a search just to see and it's like because usually if there's one there's all i was happy i was pleasantly surprised enough to see that all the original seven saw movies are back on that <laughs> all of them uh which is really funny because jigsaw for the first time ever is on netflix i'm pretty sure it's the first time ever jigsaw is on netflix not that jigsaw is not one of the better ones i it's it's really low on my list but all seven of the original Saw movies, one through final chapter, 3D, however you want to refer to it as. And the cool thing about the HBO versions is if you go under the extras for each movie, that if there's an extended version, or you, you can watch the extended version. Oh. So that's that's kind of cool. And like Saw 3 is, a, Saw 3 is the, I believe, unless they've changed things, 
Saw 3 is the most interesting one because Saw 3 actually has the longest extended cut. It's like at least six minutes different. And then when you watch the movie, and I'm not saying it necessarily works better because the end, the, the very end of that movie plays out differently with the reveal with John and Amanda and everything else and how everybody's tied together in the game. It's, it comes across differently. Maybe I think they probably were correct to cut it because it goes on longer. So I don't know if it worked as well. But it is one of the more interest. It's one of my favorite Saw movies anyway. But just the fact that they have, that's the movie that has the longest, I believe, the longest extended cut. Usually it's only like about, you know, 30 seconds. Maybe it's like a minute. But this one's, I think, at least six minutes. But yeah, I thought that, I thought that was, I thought the timing on that was pretty good. Just, and I, I'm always, a, always a sucker to be able to, to go watch those. I still wish the one thing these streaming services don't have. Yeah, they have a queue, but they don't let you build a playlist. Yeah, I don't. I hate. I don't understand the logic in it. You would think, from an algorithm perspective, it wouldn't be that hard to do. That you should just be able to, whether it's hey, build a Harry Potter playlist and just hey, I just want even if it's on his background noise, let's play all the movies one after the other. And like now with Saw, it'd be perfect. You just queue it up once in a while. Like uh, I think it's not. It's Pluto. Once in a while, when Pluto has the Saw movies, when they have the rights to them that they do it on the horror channel or the thriller channel, usually the horror channel, I think, that they will play them. Usually you know if they have the rights to them. If you catch Saw at the right time, then you can just scroll ahead and you can almost take it to the bank. Oh, they're going to be playing all seven movies right after each other, which is kind of cool. But I just thought I would mention that. And the one thing that's not related to Saw, another guilty pleasure of mine, is on Tubi. Mm -hmm. Did Did you ever watch The Sound of Thunder? They never read the short story of Sound of Thunder. But I mean, it should have asked. It sounds familiar, but I don't. I don't think so. The story is good. It's a Ray Brad. It's a Ray Bradbury story. But it, the movie is like really cheesy. There are some. To be fair, there are some special effects and CGI in this movie that aren't cheesy. Most of the real cheese, the, the stuff that looks like garbage, is when they're walking down the street and you see the cars. <laughs> to be fat, you'll pick up on that right right away. Even if I didn't say anything to you, you'd pick up on it right away. But it's it stars uh, Ed Burns and Ben Kingsley. Those are the main names in this. But basically, the st- whole the whole story is about a time safari operation because time travel is now possible. So they take people back to go on safaris to basically it's to hunt the same dinosaur over and over again because they know exactly where the dinosaur is going to be and how he's going to die and where he's going to fall. So they have a way of basically using like liquid nitrogen bullets. So basically, you're not really affecting the timeline. And you walk on this path that prevents you from doing any damage. And, of course, as the movie plays out, something doesn't go according to plan. This is the yes, butterfly. The, yes, that okay. is, that is yes. the other definition, the other definition, the, the, the literature definition of, of the butterfly effect for a yes. lot of people. Yes. From, to me, that's my butterfly effect as opposed to, yes, you're flapping your wings across the, across the other side of the world could create like a typhoon or whatever or, or on, on the other side of the world. That To me, when I think butterfly effect, yes, I think of it from the Ray Bradbury a sound of thunder story so is it a, is it a great movie no is it is it, i i think it's entertaining and i think conceptually it's entertaining so i was really pleasantly surprised to find it on tubi because i don't think it's been on tubi or pluto i actually be honest with you i had enough enough free digital credits on amazon <laughs> like sometime last year or the beginning of this year that I had enough free promotional credits for getting my things shipped when they wanted me to ship it that I actually bought, I rented a Sound of Thunder for like a couple of days just to watch it. So it's kind of cool that it's available, that it's available for uh, two, and that's on Tubi. Yeah, it's on Tubi. So I, I would recommend okay. just for the hell of it. It's, I think, like I said, the story alone and just the fact that they, the way they had to use a temporal wave concept, which I know is out, which is, a, you know, which certainly is a theory, a hypothesis that if you did, sh- if you were able to, change your timeline not create like you know not the the end game version not the quantum physics view that you actually could go back and change your own timeline that are, the changes you made wouldn't happen immediately anyway because they would happen in waves as time would basically be these changes that you've made they would have to catch up to where you are now it wouldn't all immediately happen that they kind of go with that route and actually i think that makes for a more entertaining movie so the, mm. so that's so. Those are my wild cards in there for you, Corwin. <laughs> okay, and the Saw series was on Netflix. I'm putting it in the notes. No, Jigsaw, Jigsaw, Jigsaw is on Netflix. The Saw series is on Max. Max. It's on HBO Max. Okay. Boom, got that in there. What year was Sound of Thunder? Was it like 
2005, I believe. Oh, was that recent? Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yep. I remember seeing it in the theater. I remember seeing it in the theater. It's like, oh, <laughs> that movie did. Not surprisingly, that movie did so horribly at the box office. But I think it was one of those things that was really, really delayed. It was like a troubled production, and and that's probably one of the reasons why you know the the, the special effects, especially in the area that I, that I talked about, are so repetitive and not really and not really good. But I think if you look at some of the cre- the creatures and stuff they create, and even the dinosaurs themselves, they're not. You know, it's not. I don't. I some think. I think sometimes it gets a bad rap for that. But I think it's. I do think it's. It's entertaining enough to check out. I think it, there are certainly a lot worse things out there to watch on Tubi, and I love Tubi. Tubi is the best thing going. You, you you could never watch. You you would never have enough time in the world to watch all the things on Tubi. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. No no Pluto. I have Pluto, and I like Pluto. But Tubi's better, but. Tubi, Tubi is a lot better because of the, I think because of the way they handle the ads. I think Pluto's gotten better with ads. They don't do them. They don't have as many of them, and they don't beat you over the head with the same package over and over oh, again yeah. like they did, because that's the worst. But so Tubi, so Pluto's better, but Pluto still pumps a lot. Like if you ever, like if you ever movie, I'm trying to remember like as an example, like something like because I forget how long this movie actually is, but it's not that long. That rollerball, like the like, I love rollerball, the original rollerball. It's so damn good, and it's so timely too because of what it talks, especially nowadays about society versus the individual. Forget about the remake; you don't want to watch the remake. That's, you don't want to watch the McTiernan what, remake. With, was that with, the one with LL? Yes, yes, and 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 Jean Reno and Klein and and Rebecca Romaine. Uh, <laughs> And they still could have salvaged that movie just at the end. If they just did one thing, they could have at least salvaged it. But no, the best part of the whole original movie, they, they, they changed. They changed. But another, another, but another spoiler alert, the movie I highly recommend, watch Rollerball, the original. About it's fan- That movie is fantastic. It really is and speaks so much about society and the individual. But Rollerball on Pluto was freaking close to three hours. And I think, the mo- and I think it's only, it might only be like two hours and 15 minutes or something max or something when they have it, when they have it on if they have it on Pluto, sometimes it's it's really it's really weird. Pluto is cool because they have cool channels. They still have the Godzilla channel. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yep, they had the Godzilla channel for a while. That's how I've caught up in a lot of the movies I had never seen before. I I love the they have the I Love Lucy channel. I watch that all the time. I love that, and they have the Universal Monsters channel, which is weird because it's a live channel, which I don't quite understand what that really means to them. I can only suspect they're co-opting that somewhere else maybe it's something they're getting with peacock since it's universal but it streams differently because you can tell you get more hang-ups with with Mm -hmm. universal monsters channel but they have some cool stuff besides all the literal universal monster movies you know that once in a while they have the thing the carpenter thing halloween 2 halloween 3 they have a bunch of uh, they have like the frank langella dracula too they have a bunch of stuff so it's a it's cool i do like pluto i have my kicks i go back and forth between tubi and pluto but Tubi always has Tubi adds a lot of new stuff, and they add a lot of horror movies, and that's kind of up up my alley. And like I said, they add some stuff whenever the, the month begins. I always like checking out Tubi, like like Netflix and Max and all these things. What have they added? So I just stumbled into Sound of Thunder like two days ago because it was a recommendation. It's like, oh my god, I have to watch that. I have to add it to my list, and I have to watch it. And look, my luck, they'll take it off at the end of the month. But the point is, at least I got to see it a couple of times. Damn, now you're going to make me have to go start checking on Tubi because I know I have it, but I barely, barely open it. Yeah, I would I would highly recommend Tubi because they have so they really they really have so much stuff. It's it, it's really impressive that that it's when I first found Tubi, I remember I, I, I that's really shortly after I got the fire stick. I downloaded it. I'm looking on this and I was just looking in the horror ca- category. It's like and you just keep scrolling across and scrolling across. And that's even before I signed up before i signed up so signed up for it because you obviously don't need to sign up to watch these movies but you can pick up where you left off i think on tubi if you sign up when when you sign up but i'm watching this and i found what hell night which is with linda blair like from 1980 or something which i always loved that movie when i used to watch it as a kid on hbo all the time it's like that was the first movie i ever watched on tubi and it's like oh my god it's like and you could get like that one genre you can that one category you just keep swiping and scrolling through and it's like oh my god it's like a like you're like up to like a thousand plus movies in that one category and it's not going to end so it's just it's just a it, it really it's i i really love tubi it's, it's probably 
certainly for something that's free, it, it works. Ju- I think it's probably even the interface, even though they changed the colors. I will admit I don't like they changed it to purple, purple. when it used to be. Yeah, it's OK. But I, they, and they changed the font, too. It's not even I don't I don't mean the font of the logo. I mean, the actual font of the movies and the written the descriptions. They changed that like about two months ago, too. I noticed right off the bat. But I, yeah, if anybody who doesn't have Tubi, especially if you have a Fire Sticker, or maybe probably I assume Roku would be the same way. Two, you get a lot of bang for your buck, and I, I and I mean beyond the fact that it's free, free. you get it. <laughs> I mean, obviously you get any bang for your buck when it's free, but I, but it's the fact that there's there's so much to choose from. It's it's really really cool. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. I will check out the horror section then, since you've. Uh... You put so much, uh, oh, there's horror and horror thriller since you put so much on it. So I will definitely take a scroll through and maybe find something I haven't watched in forever. And make sure you make sure you watch Sound of Thunder. <laughs> yeah, before they take it away. That'll be a weekend. I got time on Sunday. I'll probably I think it's like, I think it's, I think on Tubi, it's like an at like something like an hour 46. I think something like that. Yeah. Okay. That's the other thing about Tubi. They don't have many commercials. They really, they really don't have many commercials. I did notice Pluto kind of has. I think they stole the whole circle thing. Remember, Tubi has a circle thing, so you know how long the commercials are going to be because mm-hmm. it starts like you're downloading that circle. So, so you can see how long your commercial break is going to be. And Pluto didn't have that, but Pluto I think has a similar version now. So they um, they, pro- they probably just stole stole it from Tubi. Hey, that's a good idea. Man, I'm telling you, Amazon burned me up when they start throwing in ads. That was the I was already pissed at Amazon since their interface is the worst. Their interface sucks, but when they threw commercials in there, it's like I, I will do. I'll go out my way to avoid having to watch anything on Amazon. Yeah, no, I I technically have it. I still have Prime free on at least one device because I think it's on my mom's account. I think it's like the TV in in, in my in the living room, and technically I might have it free if I log in using the smart app on on this TV. I might, if, assuming my assuming my ex wife still has her account on Amazon, <laughs> I might still be looking. At, but the point is, I almost ne- I almost never go to Amazon. Uh, I, I bought like I bought like one one movie uh, on Amazon again using my great digital reward credits. But other than that, yeah, I I almost never go into Amazon Prime anymore to watch stuff. It's just the it's just worst. unfortunate. But the, you're right. The in, the interface is lousy to begin with, and that's part of the reason why. All right. So closing out the regular coverage, I also saw the Boy Kills World. It is uh, right now video on demand, um, starring Bill Skarsgård and Jessica Roth and a bunch of other people. I saw one trailer for this, and I'm like, okay, I will definitely be seeing this, and I'm not going to watch anything else. And I got to say, in the vein of Kill Bill, with just some crazy action, um, it, it completely lived up to the hype for me. Um, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic future where you have the rich upper class who kind of have some, almost like a purge thing where they kind of wipe out some of the peasants and stuff. And we have a boy who is taken, a boy whose uh, mother and sister is killed, and he's taken by, um, I can't even, I don't remember what they call the guy. It's like a, his mentor, basically. This guy becomes his mentor and trains him in the woods to fight. However, you know, before, they actually, after they kill the mother, his mother and sister, they actually cut off his tongue, they t- put hot prongs in his ear, they blind, they... Make a mutant deaf. So he's living in the forest getting trained how to fight. And his whole mission is to take down this whole regime. So um, he accidentally stumbles across some other people (laughs) who's kind of on the same page. Andrew Koji from Warriors in there. He plays this (laughs) very capable drunk. But the characters are just way over the top and way funny. And the main character, since he's deaf and he's mute, his inner monologue is kind of the the narrator throughout it and one of the things that he loved growing up um was video games playing in the arcade with his sister so his inner voice is just the over the top narrator that you would hear in games which puts a really interesting funny twist on it as well but um definitely worth 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 checking out if you like your action movies it can be a bit gory at times people do get um messed up pretty badly but 
great fun movie. It did look it did look interesting. It was a movie that I know we had originally planned to go see, but unfortunately, this was during the time like we talked about on, my, on our show uh, that. I, and this wasn't just my area. The Regal was doing it around the country. They just weren't doing it everywhere. Everywhere, but it wasn't just like, "Hey, your area is the only one being singled out." But they were somewhere towards the end of it. I think it was the end of April. They were they started rolling back the hours because I guess they were trying to save money since nobody was they weren't bringing a lot of business bringing in a lot of business in general. So they started wiping out the second evening sets. So that you were you were lucky if you got a movie that started close to eight o'clock, like on a Thursday night, which was really a pain uh, for for a few weeks. And that was a movie that like the the, the week that it opened, like the only showing they had of it was like something like six twenty, like on a Thursday night. It's like really that ain't gonna work. Uh, so I didn't get to see it. I know my friend he he did, he did get to see it because uh, he went at a, at a different day, and we just saw something else the following week. I am interest. I am interested in it. It looked it did look cool. So I'm definitely going to check it out when I get a chance when it when it when it comes on um, when it comes on streaming and and hopefully uh, hopefully this won't be beginning of a of a prolonged box office slump for uh, Mr. Skarsgård with the uh, with the crow fast approaching, which probably does not bode well. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if I'll see that in theaters, but fingers crossed. I mean, I like the actual you know story. Yes. So, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, they've done it justice. Whose who's movie is that? Who's the director or writer and stuff? Do you know? Oh, the, the, of the Crow, we, the Crow remake? Yeah. Uh, like yeah, didn't we figure that? It was at least, I think it was. I found it. Rupert Sanders directed. There's James O'Barr, Zach Blalin, William Joseph Schneider writing. So that's three writers. Yeah, I know. Oftentimes, not a good sign either. But that, but sometimes you get surprised by that. You can't, you can't stereotype and say automatically just because it's got multiple writers, it means it's gonna, it's gonna suck. But it doesn't. Didn't look fantastic. The trailer did. The trailer did not. The trailer did not look good. Oh. So, so well, we will, we will have to see. Okay. Hey, Sound of Thunder has a, is a solid six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> to be fair, though, fifty eight percent of Google users said they liked it, so I guess that's something. <laughs> I will, I will watch it and report back to you, let you know my thoughts. <laughs> it made eleven point seven million dollars. Uh, yeah, how much yeah. did it, how much did it take to make it? <laughs> That would that actually that actually would be really fascinating fascinating to find out. I'm, uh, that's that's one of those that's one of those movies that they, you might not even be able to find out how much it costs. But and and the good news is at least it was back in two thousand five, so you know that it couldn't have been a particularly large some a, no. yeah a particularly large budget. Uh, but yeah, that's that was yeah that was not good. But I just happened to stumble upon that as, as I was looking up the crow, and it's like, well, he's got he's got that one. So let me let me let me change let me change the. Uh, let me change the info and see what you find. Actually, according to this, that's not even that's interesting because that's not that's not what the numbers cite. Oh, so, oh wow! According to this, it was an eighty million dollar budget. Damn. Damn. Yeah. No matter how you slice it, that was a that was a turd. It was, and Sir Ben Kingsley of all people, sexy to be beast. Fair, to be fair, I don't really, I don't, I think that's a movie that they. I think they just dumped it in a few places just to say they released it because I don't think, yeah, because it says here that like the theater counts as like eight hundred. If this is accurate on the number side, it said eight hundred sixteen opening theaters, and it only played like two point one weeks average run per theater. So wow. the reality is that barely was it barely was playing anywhere. So I'm kind of lucky that, quote unquote, lucky just that I even got a chance to see it in the theater. But uh, wow. I love that story. But I'm only saying that to be somewhat tongue in cheek because I still think it's certainly worth a free watch on Tubi. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that no, no one can deny that the movie was a, was a total box office disaster across the board. So I'm just saying, how much is your time worth? Is the real question. Trust me, there's a, there's a, I can say with 100 percent confidence, there are a lot worse things out there to watch on any streaming platform, which might be a nice segue to our final topic. 
Yeah, the one thing that I, I, I use to bait you into jumping onto this show because um, we're going to talk about Star Wars, The Acolyte on Disney+. Plus. Something that I was very much looking forward to since the the Force is the main draw for me when it comes to Star Wars. That's kind of my bread and butter. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. It started we out. It started out good. First two episodes, okay. You know, kind of an obvious story. You know, they're, they're, they're building. They're building the... The... the a group of Jedi has done something. We're not really sure what it is, but an assassin is out killing off specific members. Um, we find out it is, you know, one of the twins, um, Osha and May, or the other twins. May is the one that is kind of the assassin right now. And then the third episode, we kind of get the flashback of their kind of their story, the kids' story, Osha and May, and what happened to them and I gotta say episode 3 is where they really really lost me it was like the momentum just died and my interest was it hurt episode 3 was just disappointing yeah you describe it well the first two episodes were they were slow but and again the asterisk to all this is slow is relative because the episodes are also all ridiculously short so even a slow episode of the Acolyte is going to still go by fast because you're probably, if you're lucky, getting like 28 minutes of actual story. So it's going to go by fast. But the first two episodes were slow. But they were not horrible. It, 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 let, it kept your interest enough. Yeah, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have done what they did with Carrie Ann Moss because that was a waste. Yep. I know that was the hook. That was the hook. Spoiler alert, if you're expecting to see a lot of Carrie Ann Moss, well, you better not you better not run to the bathroom and go get your popcorn in the first five minutes of the first episode or else. <laughs> You'll be or, or else that's probably the, that's probably like not, not well, we haven't seen the show hasn't ended yet. But the reality is that's probably gonna be at least half as much of Carrie Ann Moss that you're gonna see in the entire show combined going forward. Uh yeah, once they started going into the into the whole witches thing and oh they were able to, unless we get a retcon. Oh, they they were able to create life somehow. So, yeah, you know that specialty that Darth Plague has finally figured out with playing with the midichlorians, which led to Anakin. Eh, that wasn't so special. Anakin, eh, not so special. <laughs> see, see, what you don't know is, uh, uh, the 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 twins are Anakin's great 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 grandmother. There we go. <laughs> Mm, that kind of be a hard sell on his mother's side on his mother's side yeah (laughs) me uh we we don't know where she came from and she was in the sun a lot so maybe you know no that that wouldn't make sense it'd be the other the opposite it doesn't doesn't make no sense scrap that the theory the theory destroyed uh i don't know i i this is another thing where i didn't expect this show to be good I had, I had no illusions it was going to be good. There was there were these these kind of like, these stench of failure hovering over the show and all the things you heard about the show, which is the ultimate irony because all all the wokeness and all the the pronounness and all the, the lesbian space which stuff potentially none of that none of that it really has anything to do with why the show doesn't work. I mean, it's icing on the cake if you think it doesn't work already for some people. But that's that's hardly the major problem with this show. But that's that's all you heard about. So I had no illusions that the show was going to be good. I was only interested in it for Amanda Stenberg, who plays May and Osha, because I like Amanda Stenberg. Almost everything I've seen her in, I I kind of I kind of like her. What else was she uh, in? Let's see. She was in she was in the film adaptation of uh, Evan Hansen, which was interesting because. I think that, that might have been the only song in that movie that was not from the Broadway show. They either wrote it for her or she wrote it, but she got us. But there was a spe- special song that I think, I think that was I, I could be wrong, but I think that might be the only song that was in the movie that was not originally from the Broadway show. So I thought the, her character and her performance and that was good. I liked her in, even though it's a weird ass movie. Bodies, bodies, bodies is oh. a weird movie, but but she, <laughs> yes. but but she she was. But she was good in that, and there, and I gotta find the other name. There was the the, the movie. Oh, uh, of course, of course, she was in a uh, Hunger Games. She was ruined Hunger Games, but nobody wow, ever. Wow, you're right. 
And actually, here's another here's another spoiler alert because I actually almost, I never saw. To be fair, I never really saw this movie, so it's easy for me not to know this. But it's one of those things that after the fact you find out. She also was the young. She was the young Zoe Zaldana in uh, Colombiana, but I didn't know that too until she played the young the young version of uh, of. Zoe Zaldan. Dude, so, now, now that you say it, definitely is like, yes, I, I, I recognize her as Rue. Wow. Yeah, I think that's that, I think that's the first that's the first movie I think that she really made an impression on people on. But she had been doing stuff for The Hate You Give, the which I've never which I saw some of that. The that's movie good. that I really the movie that I liked her in a lot was Everything Everything. I don't think I've seen that one. It's it's weird. She's like she's like it's almost like I'm not going to give you explain the twist, but she's but it starts out where it's kind of like a, a, a female version of the of the boy in the plastic bubble because she supposedly has an immune disease and she's kept away from everything. But you have to watch the movie to see how that all plays out. But that everything everything is as an and and she was spider and she's the voice of Spider Bite and Spider Man across the Spider Verse as well. Wow, that's um, like. So, when you said yeah. Rue, it's like I, I see her face, and yes, it's just automatically recognizable. Wow! Oh, and the Darkest Minds. I actually forgot about the Darkest Minds. I liked I liked her in that movie too. Didn't see that uh, which one is, either. It's kind of, you would you would like it because it's almost it's kind of X Men like because it's dealing with it's dealing with mutants and dealing with classes of mutants. And I guess she's one of the higher classes of mutants, which basically means they get tar- they get targeted for death based on their color. They color rank them, and uh, so yeah that. So I like her. I like. I mean, does she does she open her mouth too much about things just because it gets her in trouble and it makes her a target for stuff? Otherwise, yeah. But we there's a lot of there's a lot of people that do that. And I almost forget. And again, you don't have to agree with her on her points, but you. But she sees herself as an activist, so she so you know she's gonna Stir be speaking up. out about stuff, even if even if it's not necessarily probably what she should be doing from a career perspective, or you it's it could be alienating of the art. I'm a little more forgiving of that con- conceptually in general, but I I just don't think I just don't think she's been that good in this show. But I don't blame her. I think it's the writing. I think the writing is probably the weakest part of the show. But it's like it's the same way Natalie Portman was not particularly good in the prequels. It's not because Natalie Portman can't act. It's just because Material. she didn't get a whole lot. She didn't get a whole lot to work with. I think. All, I think only Liam Neeson and Ewan McGregor and uh, Ian McDermott did anything with that material <laughs> that they had to work with in those movies. Yeah. Which doesn't mean I don't like the prequels. I'll take the prequels over the sequels any day of the week. Yeah. But the point is, yeah. but the writing was, but the, the, we all know George Lucas's dialogue ain't great. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not a, that, a spoiler alert. But I do like Amanda Stenberg. That was my main interest for this project. But yeah. it's it's there. As we tonight, as we get done, we can go watch the, the newest episode. episode that dropped, the second to last. So, so, yeah. so, 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 episode three. We'll, we'll, I'm sticking to the positive since you gave me a nice little leeway into it. Okay, I, I like the fact that they connect it to the Night Sisters. We get to see an older version of them or offshoot or something. So, it's it's still connected to current stuff or characters, you know, that we know. I like the fact that also the Jedi seem to be bullies. They're more bullies in this one. They're they're definitely in a seat of power and controlling how others use the Force or as the witches call it, the threads. Um, I do like that the Jedi aren't all in a positive light, which, you know... We, we do get a little hint of that further on in the other movies, but here definitely, you know, they're flawed. There's good things with them and there's bad things with them. So I like that. I still think in the post the post Lucas era, I think we've been getting too much of the Jedi being negative. I think I think that which in a way, coming from the point of view of some of the people creating these things that make sense that everything is gray. That nothing there really is no black and white well there's black and white but not when it comes to good or evil <laughs> <laughs> and, and that area you can never see black and white it's it's always uh it's it's always gray and i and that's not that's not that's not really true i mean there may be a lot of grayness and i and i'm all for your your parallaxian kind of view of par, or parallaxian villain where it's like well okay maybe they're really not 
a villain or maybe you know you certainly can understand their perspective on things and you know if i were in their shoes then maybe i would view this i'm all for that but there's some there are some things that you know it's like it's it's not like palpatine and yoda are just oh they're basically the same yeah. they're not <laughs> it's like vader and obi-wan are the same no <laughs> they're not but that's kind of like how we've been how we've been drifting off and like oh we got to tear it everything Everything that's supposed to be good, we got to tear down, and it's like, uh, I don't know. I I get it. I can understand why that has an appeal, but I think we've gotten way too much of it, making the Jedi, making the Jedi out to just be uh, either incompetent or just just not good. And which then make you know, even in the even in the, like you said, even in this show, it's like you, know, you we don't know the whole story with Kamir yet, but they've already done like the last episode alone. Or the last two episodes have been certainly doing enough to try to at least give you the hint that you could have some sympathy or be empathetic empathetic so towards him so yeah so let's move on so episode three again i, I feel like it dropped the ball it was just I, I don't know it didn't it didn't do anything and i'm gonna say i think some of the story beats are way too simple but not to toot my own horn, you know. I, I've I'm well versed with story, so usually I can pick pick up story beats and tell where things are going. Um, I think some of this is just a little too simple for me, and you know, when you compare it to things like Andor, it's just like they can they can do better. I just feel like they can they can do better. They can make it more interesting. It doesn't have to be so elementary with some of the stories. And I don't know, maybe if they split up this episode, this flashback into disperse it throughout the series, maybe it would have been better. But for me, I don't know. This episode just really killed it for me. Yeah, I mean, let's 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 be honest. The the most unpredictable thing about this show so far has just been the fact that they wiped everybody out. Yes. <laughs> and what episode five? Five. Right? So episode five. We, we'll just yeah, yeah we'll, ep- four and five go. Yeah, episode five is the most action-packed episode so far, and you do get a lot of cool lightsaber action and seeing what whatever Kamir is, whatever the stranger is, whether he's really Sith or just a, uh, an outcast Jedi, that he does some things that we haven't really seen on done in lightsaber fights before. But when you when you think about this, all of as I'm losing my train of thought, so I'm trying to come back to it. Uh, do 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 uh, that. Even in, even in that episode, which is action packed, the only thing that's surprising is yeah, all the, the, all the Jedi other than Saul <laughs> get wiped out. I mean, because you would have thought at least because and you, you know, you would have thought maybe what what like you, what Yord right Yord and Jackie would have survived because they're the ones we've spent time with from the beginning. Yeah. But they wiped everybody out. So that's that's kind of the only thing that's I mean the fact that Kamir was the guy underneath the mask that was fairly predictable. Yes. Just yes. Based, and the, and it would be stunning whether it's tonight's episode or next week's episode that we don't find out that the green-headed chick who is, of course, Leslie Headland's wife in real life, who is a horrible character. She's just a horribly... She's not likable. You can always tell something's up with her. She just... It would explain some of her bad decision-making, which we know there's a lot of bad decision-making mm-hmm. and bad, and bad weird, oh. weird changes in dialogue. In this, but, and and you, just, you just reminded me of something because I love the fact that they can the Jedi can be tied up in red tape sometime because when Saul wanted to go somewhere, she's like, "Oh, we need to con- we need to consult X, Y, and Z and get clearance with all this other stuff." And I'm just sitting here like, "Damn, yeah, all that red tape really would piss me off." And I'm and again, depending on the reveal, it might some of this might make sense because it would be stunning based on the fact that you see the the wound on the back of Kamir's back that it would be sh- stunning if his Jedi Master wasn't the green headed chick with the lightning. With, like with the lightning whip, with, with the, the light whip. whip, yeah, yeah. So I mean, so again, the majority of things that have happened in this movie are predict are predict in this TV show are predictable. Is it shocking that 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 the 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 two the two sisters that mind you are not identical when they're young, <laughs> but are identical as they get older because they're played by just Amanda Stenberg. But there are not, but there are two actresses playing them when they're younger. Explain that one. Uh, but the reality is that. How shocking is it that somebody pulls a Freaky Friday thing somewhere in the movie and tries to pass themselves off as the other? It's yeah. like, uh, uh, it's like okay, 
Yeah, I mean, so not even well done either because it's like, oh, you're a Jedi master who can't figure out who your apprentice is by the force, let alone the head tattoo that, yeah, it might be her bangs might be covering it a tad. But it's like, hey, you spent all this time with this one character and you trained her. And it's like, you can't figure out that this is really. And, and the whole idea of, hey, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to your family and everything on that planet. Oh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Once we get back to the ship, I'm going to tell you. Six episodes in, Saul hasn't told us shit yet. <laughs> now he might tonight might be the night, but the point is it's it, it's almost like that what Chekhov's gun thing in the play. It's like we keep seeing it, so it's like it's about time you use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and again, they just I think the story is just fairly simple. We know the Jedi did something wrong. We definitely know something is up with what happened there. Just even from the the one Jedi who literally you know, killed himself, took the poison that uh, May gave him to make amends for whatever it is that happened. So, yeah, I mean, simple stuff. I will say, though, with episode five, when the, the, all the fighting, I was on the edge of my seat. I mean, Saul and, and Jekti throwing down together against him, that was just some awesome, awesome fighting. And more than that, they did throw some new things in there, which I've never saw before. So, the main villain has like gauntlets and a helmet and when he hits a lightsaber with it it shorts out the lightsaber for a short period of time that was awesome i just never seen anything like that very inventive so those are the kind of things that i really want to see but you know that fight that brought me back up with this series like okay this is what i'm here for this is what excite this is what is exciting this is what they need to do and then of course they followed it up with the next episode which was really slow Ugh. There were some interesting things in it, but it was a lot of dumb things too. But it was, but it was, it was really slow, and that's, and it's, and again, it's, it's hard to, for, it takes a lot of work to make something feel slow when it's less than thirty minutes. <laughs> but they do it all, and again, it's not like, oh my god, when is this going to end slow? But you know, you're not moving the plot ahead, yeah. ahead very far at all. And, and- and there is there is a thing where you get to the end of an episode and you're just like, yes, I want the next episode now. Give it to me. Yes, I love it. And there is a thing where you get to the end of it. It's just like, really? You're going to stop it there? It's just frustrating. Frustrating. We don't. I don't think we get enough per episode. They really could have – they could have balanced it better than that. Even if – was this supposed to be a movie? I think we had to make some mm, conversation no, that I don't, possibly – it should have been like a, a two hour movie or, or something. Yeah, it would, it would work. It would have worked better as a two hour movie because I mean, you because you, because you can make a case when you let's let's say for the sake of argument that you end up having. Let's say you end up having like a little over three hours of real material, three and a half hours of material through eight episodes or something. And then you look at all the stuff that a lot of stuff in here that you didn't need that you absolutely could have trimmed this down to like a. You know, it could have been two may not even needed to, to may not have needed to be even two and a half hours, but you could have done something that would have been tighter. It would have been it would have made more would have been more entertaining. And I don't know. It's just. It, it is it kind of is what it is, and it's it's not as hard. I mean, it's not as bad as the book of Boba Fett, but it's also the expectation game. People thought that people were looking forward to the book of Boba Fett, especially after Boba Fett kind of got rehabilitated like in, in, in the second season of the Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the expectation game matters because I don't think there were very few people that were, that were pumped for this, for the, for the show. Cause you kind of knew, I mean, you kind of knew where, what they were going to be focusing in on to a certain extent. And even if you want to move, like I said, the, the agenda stuff is not as blatantly obvious or in your face 24 seven, as much as in other shows and other movies, but it's, it's, it didn't. It, that, that certainly didn't help people's anticipation for this. It's like, oh, what are we going to get? It's like, uh, but I think it's just. But to be fair, I think it's up to this point. It has failed on its own. It has nothing to do with the people who dislike this. For the most part, yes, there's a certain percentage of people that came in actively wanting to dislike it, so they were just looking for any, you know, the the confirmation bias thing. But I think a lot, the majority of people who don't like this, are not liking it. I think because the show is literally giving them reasons to not like it. It's, so. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm just kind of in between. It 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 could be so much more. I'm hoping we get to learn more about the Sith more than anything else. 
I mean, that's kind of, I think, the new territory that we don't have much information or background on. No, it would it would be it would be it would be very interesting and, and it would be it would be wise to go down that road. I mean, you th- you think about it. One, some something. I mean, when you really break it down, if you wanted to do, you may have to pick your spots in the history of when you do this because obviously you don't you you you, you can't really do it. You couldn't really do a show about a Sith Lord that is based on based on uh, history or based on mythos, even though most of that stuff would have been legends material anyway, so you can do whatever you want with it, I suppose. But you can't have somebody who, like, survived for 50 years as a Sith Lord and do a show about him, because that's not going to work. But there's a bunch of Sith Lords that probably didn't last very long in slight scale of the rule of two. <laughs> you can very easily do a, a few a show of a few seasons of, of the of the line of, the line of succession, or just skipping gaps. You don't necessarily have to begin with Darth Bane and try to fill in the gaps all the way to Sidious. But the reality is, there's no reason why you couldn't focus. I mean, the, if, if they ever, and of course, it's it's Disney Star Wars, so they would ruin it. But if they ever decided to go and do the Darth Bane trilogy and make that like a make that a, a show, and just do like two or three seasons, or ho- however what they wanted to do, but just do those three books, they think Drew Carpeshian wrote that was fantastic. That that would make such a great show. Because Darth Bane was such an interesting character, and, and he was a compelling character enough where he's the bad guy, but yet, but you're fascinated by him, and he's he's the he's the protagonist for the I think in, in all three books, so it's interesting. You could do so much with stuff like that, even if it was again just picking it sometime during the rule of two and plugging plugging in the gaps. Uh, even even Plagueis, Plagueis just cries out to do stuff with, even if they're going to play around with some of the history, <clears throat> the history you got in that in that book, that. And, and change it. The reality is, Plagueis is a very inter- important character in in, in the mythos. So you, yeah. So expl- and yeah. I mean, there's so much. There's so much you could do with that, and and it just seems like I don't know. It seems like a wasted opportunity, especially because they're going to a period where you have more freedom, and yet it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like they're taking advantage of it. I mean this this series should have been a main draw for new people to really get into Star Wars. It has nothing, it's like, what, a thousand, I don't know if it's a thousand years, but it's a good amount of time before any of the Skywalker stuff, so for the most part, all these are all new characters, it's an all new setting. They could literally do whatever they want, and they, this should have been huge. This should have been drawing in all kind of people into Star Wars, it's disappointing the potential that they wasted with it that they could have done so much more yes this this definitely had this but this definitely had potential this was a show even in the in the ruins of what this has been so far you could see in the embers here as it, as it burns out of control you can see that there was a good show in there somewhere with this idea and part of the problem is again that the characters that we care, should care about the most are not the most interesting. That the twins are not that interesting. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe it'll be slightly more interesting once we get finally find out exactly what happened on the planet and how the, all all the witches got wiped out and what were the Jedi's role in that or not, or not whether it's what we think it is or not what we think it is. That maybe they'll be a little bit more interesting. But what they've done with them so far, no. I mean, Osha I thought was interesting. May I didn't think was interesting, which is hard to do because usually you would think the dark side one would be. Excuse me, as my as my voice did the Peter Brady there, that the dark side one would be the more interesting one naturally. But it's like no, Osha was kind of more interesting. You have Saul and you have Kamir, and those are really the most interesting characters, or the ones that you want to know more about. Maybe Jackie if they kept her alive, but oh. <laughs> she was she was she was cool while she was alive. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, man, she was that fight, man. I, I actually went back after the episode, rewind, and went back to just Saul and Jackie throwing down the master and and Padawan together fighting, and they were just ruthless. They were they were hardcore. They were hardcore. That was some fantastic stuff. But yeah, Yord, I just uh, didn't see it come. I didn't see those two deaths just. It hurt. <laughs> well, you already could see a little bit because you never got the vibe he was that good, and he was sure. cocky. He was really cocky. He was he kind of had an he kind of had an attitude. So, but Jack, 
obviously we can take we can assume Saul is a pretty good teacher because from a skill perspective, even though it would, even though we really haven't seen much out of Osha, you would think she still would be able to do something. Yeah, I mean, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we'll see how it ends. Uh, I'm still probably looking forward to that more than Agatha all along. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, another another show that I'm not going to say no one demanded because we know that's, that Catherine Hahn has a has a rabid regardless of whether it's a big fan base. But I don't necessarily think that's the show Marvel really needs to be following up with uh, Echo. It's like, let's give us you have Loki, you have Loki. Yeah. Then then they give us then they give us uh, Echo. And now they're going to give us. Agatha Harkness with Ironheart fast on its heels. I mean, I'm 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 not gonna lie. I got a thing for Arby Plaza for some reason, but um. <laughs> oh yeah, she looks like she might be the best. It it's it's I don't know. It just and it it just kind of almost even the I saw the trailer and it's like yeah they they kind of draw you in with the police procedural thing, but obviously she hold just, on. I, I don't know. I don't know anything, so don't. Oh, you, don't, didn't, you, don't didn't watch the te- nope. you didn't watch the te- nope. you didn't watch the teaser. Not watching right. anything. Nope. Now that's not what the show is about. But 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 it it I I think basically what you saw of Wanda leave her off. I think that explains the stuff you see when you if you ever do watch the teaser. But the reality, it just I don't know. It just does not look. Doesn't sway me at all. It doesn't say, hey, I had no interest, and now I have slightly more interest. No, it's like I don't know. Just just give me Deadpool and Wolverine, and let's just call. Let's have one big. One big Marvel victory, hopefully for the year, because the Lord knows next year is a whole bunch of question marks. <laughs> All right. Even um, if we remove Blade, which we'll probably never see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else? So, of course, we, you know, waiting for this season to end. I'm going to throw some stuff that I want out, and then you can give me your thoughts on what you, what you would like or what you think would turn this around. We have to get the answer to what happened by the end of the season. So, yes, let's let's answer that. Season two, if we ever get one, or how they end season one. I think Osha needs to go to the dark side. I think she just needs to be so f- angry with the Jedi that she wants to go learn with the stranger. I forgot his name. Whatever his name is. I think that would be a good twist and a good way to continue the story and then we can learn with her how the dark side works back then or what their story is or how it develops from there and then maybe have Saul chasing her or trying to get back or find her. I think that would be a very interesting way of continuing it because what they're doing now is just bleh. I don't see much of a future here. I don't well I agree and I think that's I think that's the danger the danger in having a blatant if they go the blatant cliffhanger route and and let me define that by even saying it's not like oh somebody's hanging literally hanging hanging by a thread and we don't know if they're going to live or die. not even that just that they they get us through eight, eight episodes and either they're about to fill in the final piece of the puzzle that we need or they don't even are they just decide we're not going to go down that road because, well, we're we're saving that for next season. No, we that's not what the show needs because that will anger that will just like that will just completely seal the deal about how much how people how much they don't like the show. Yeah. When it's like, hey, we we it's like we got we got eight episodes of a show, eight episodes of a show that was never greenlit for a second season before the first show premiered. It'd be different, even if we whether we thought it should have been it would be different <laughs> if we already knew that this show had been greenlit for a second season because then you would have you would temper your expectations and you would expect okay some things we're not going to find out about you should know you should know it's like what they did with the obi-wan show there's obviously because it's obi-wan you always had a potential if you did if you've planned ahead or just even if you didn't even if you wanted to make each season its own contained story so you didn't have to worry about leaving something dangling for the next year. You always knew you could do another Obi-Wan season, but if they if they just said, well, you know, we're kind of going to set up, you know, the real big Vader Obi-Wan fight, but we're not going to give it to you this year. We're going to wait to next, you know, to if we get picked up for season 2. two. Yeah, that that that's what I, and I'm afraid that we may get something like that as a almost try to as a justification to 
to green light a show that I, I'm still trying to figure out where the hell like the hundred eighty million dollars went on the show <laughs> because th- this does not look like that expensive a show compared to other things that we've watched. It's like it just, it's like oh I don't get it. It's a lot of soundstage work, some stuff on location, like the the island that where Kamir was with Osha in episode six. Oh. Yes. Question yeah. sidebar. Yes. Is that the island? No. Okay. It's not returning. It's not Last Jedi. Okay. Just curious. I'm like, hey, is that? But all right, go ahead. Yeah, I, that's where I knew you were going because some people, <laughs> some people have speculated that it's Octo because or Octu because of the the way it looks, and I think Leslie Headland has confirmed that it's not because and and because that no, that was never the intent. Plus, the only reason it's there is because it's there. Kamir is there because it's got the mine or the the supply of cartosis to use for his helmet and his gauntlet and things like that. So. So yeah, it's not it's not Octo. Okay. Until they retcon it and tell us it is. <laughs> All right. <sighs> any any other thoughts before we close out? No, I'm sorry. T- take two is like half an hour longer. <laughs> now <laughs> twice as long. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's because we've uh we we've had time to think and and consider things. So, um. But yeah, it was, it was my it was my a sound of thunder t- t- tangent that just took us in a whole different direction. <laughs> it's no problem. That's that's the point of this show. Just free flow, have fun. Just like we're just chilling in a room talking. So, all right, uh, Mark, I definitely want to thank you again for joining me again um, <laughs> <laughs> for this episode. Third, third time, third time is not going to be the charm, Corwin. <laughs> no, no, it will not. But um, go ahead and plug your your show one last time where people can find you. LanternCast.com is a website. Lantern, uh, LanternCast at gmail.com is the best way to contact us. We're pretty much available on every major platform if if you want to listen to us on it. Whichever one you do listen to us on, if you want to give us some feedback or let us know what you think, that works. Um, Twitter. Well, it used to be Twitter. It's Twitter, Twitter, face- Twitter to help. Yeah, it's, I think so too, but... It, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you could use hashtag GLcast to track us down there too. And that's 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 kinda that's kinda it. Oh, let's let's plug Chad's other show that he is doing. Oh we'll plug Chad alright. <laughs> Stand there, Chad, hold his apple. <laughs> uh yes, Chad Chad has a spin off creative credit, which uh falls under our banner, but it's it's also in it's independent to a certain extent in which Chad does a lot, goes, he seeks out and, and interviews creators, writers, artists in the comic book industry in particular. And that's a, a special passion for Chad. So he does a good job with those. And that's, that, that is definitely something if it, that interests you that you might want to check out. So that's create creative credit is the name of that podcast slash spinoff. Yeah. So listeners check it out. All right. Well, thank you once again. We're going to close out so we can go watch this next episode and hopefully, hopefully be happy with it. <laughs> well, maybe we should lower our expectations and just hope we're not sad, massively disappointed with it. Hey, All look, right. there's a third twin. No. <laughs> oh, Lord. I I really do want them to swap places though by the end of the season. One one become a Jedi and the other just goes with the Sith. That'll be nice. But but I just I just, I just can't see May being as Jedi though. She Nobody won't... would. Besides, she can't. Let's be honest. Who the hell would train her? She's already she's already killed or been responsible for killing at least what two at least two right so far. If it, is it just two? She killed I... she killed Carrie Ann Moss and she gave the poison to. Oh that by the way that's that's the guy that's the kid who played Tommen from Game of Thrones by the way. Oh. With the fake beard, with the fake beard. Uh, so, and she was gonna, and she, even though I would have liked to have seen how this was gonna play out, she was planning on killing the Wookie. I like to, know, I don't think that would have worked that well. Yeah. But she kind of knew that wasn't gonna work that well. Yeah. well so, I, well, it'll be her and Saul trying to get Osha back. There we go, something like that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We could throw whatever we'll we want see. out there, but we know it's not going to be. Uh, it's going to be better than what they do. <laughs> Sadly, that, that that that's pro- that's probably true. Actually. 
All right, listeners, once again, we will see you guys next month. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, donate to the show, uh, patreon.com slash empcast. We will see you next month. Good night. Good night, everybody. Now appearing in the building, up in every ear hole, from 80-year-olds to the children. You're here to hear about the heroes and the villains, and save yourself some dollars, yen, and euros from the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five-alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists. Giant-sized Goliaths and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I insist. There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest. EMP, literally MP, 3 TNT. Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try to deny it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest EMP, literally MP3 TNT Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try to deny it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest